Aside from the incredibly over-the-top introduction of Big Mom, I would have to say that my other favorite moment thus far from the Whole Cake Island arc is watching Luffy bitch-slap the hell out of Cracker in Gear's second form. That's just one of the many awesome scenes from this week's surprisingly kick-ass episode of One Piece. This is the episode that I've been waiting for, a super well-balanced one, where we had some great action scenes, we had some cool character growth from Nami, and we finally got to delve a little little bit deeper into the past of Sanji, which is just as tragic and disturbing as you could possibly imagine. That and the fact that, come on, Luffy bitch slapping Cracker, like he could have come in and just punched him, he could have done like a gumu gumu pistol or a freaking Gatling styled attack. No, he bitch slapped him. That's awesome. The first half of the episode features Nami, who is desperately trying to protect Luffy from the clutches of Cracker, and she manages to take out a couple of the soldiers by singeing them with her lightning, but that doesn't really do much, and Cracker goes on the offensive and basically just ends up whipping her ass, but she still never manages to back down. And this is what's really important about the scene, and the thing I think I liked most about it, is that Nami is finally starting to grow. You're gonna see her turn into a lot more of a badass as this arc actually goes goes on, and this is just the beginning of it. It was a great moment for her, and she has a plenty more of those coming up in the Whole Cake Island arc, but right as she's about to be frickin' shish kebobbed by Cracker, that's when Luffy comes in, and like I said, he's in gear second form, and he just smacks him right in the face, and the animation during the scene looks really damn awesome. Finally, there is some fucking impact from the animators at Toei. They finally made this thing look really cool. It was great. I loved it. And as soon as you start getting all excited about the prospect of Luffy and Cracker fighting again, we cut away to Sanji. But the good news is, this week, it's definitely a lot more entertaining. Yes, we did have the whole clone conspiracy in the last episode, but we actually get to finally see more of his backstory here and how he was created as this potential super soldier by his father. Basically, his dad was trying to create his very own personal army of Power Rangers. They were going to be the best of the best of the best. And Sanji himself was certainly not the best. He couldn't catch up with his brothers and his sister. He was considered weak. And they show us a number of different exercises that they go through to actually illustrate this. Like them actually running through an obstacle course with hurdles which are on fire. Or jumping down from the top of a balcony and being able to absorb the blow without breaking your legs. And every single time, he just ends up falling flat on his face and disappointing his father to the point where his father becomes so embarrassed by him that he actually fakes the fact that he was was caught in a tragic accident and died. He relays this to the entire kingdom, but in actuality, he's actually locked up Sanji and thrown him in prison and is forcing him to wear an iron mask simply just to torture him. He doesn't even tell the brothers or Reiju. It's really damn fucked up, and that's just one of the many scenes that make this a very disturbing backstory for Sanji. So what's the rundown? On this week's episode of One Piece, like I said, we finally got some really solid storytelling in this episode, and a lot more focus. The first half of the episode was devoted to Nami and Luffy going up against Cracker, and the second half of the episode, we finally got to see some new material from Sanji's past, which is incredibly disturbing. And honestly, the final scene when Sanji is thrown into prison, and he has the mask on, and he's crying out for anyone to help him, and even his father, it's so sad. It's it, Maybe it's the voice actor who's really bringing a lot of that emotion to this part, but it, when I was reading this in the manga, I didn't really like, feel anything. I, I felt like I was made of stone. While watching the anime version, that combined with the music, the atmosphere of him being just in the dark at the middle of this dungeon at night where no one can even hear him, just, you feel so bad for Sanji during this entire time, and this is just like the beginning of his tragedy. I mean, there's still the moment where he gets lost at sea and found by Zeph who loses a leg. I mean, he goes through a lot as a child, and it's amazing to have seen where he came from and where he is now, especially the fact that his father considered him a failure, and when you look at Sanji now, he's a freaking badass. He can light his legs on fire and freaking jack you in the jaw. He's awesome. He's just kind of goofy at times and a little quirky. So quirky, in fact, that there's a scene where he's a kid where he's feeding a rat because why the hell not? He likes to test out, I guess, his recipes on just anybody that he can find who's willing to have them. But of course, his father's not going to have any of this because royalty should never serve anyone. And his dad actually picks up the rat and, and just throws it out the window, which, of course, just completely 
fucks with Sanji's head even more. His father really instills in him that in order to catch up with his brothers and sisters, he has to work a hundred times harder, and then eventually he just gives up on him and just tosses him into prison. I have to talk about Nami again. She was so awesome in this chapter, how she stood up for the fact that Sanji's always been there to save them, but now it's her turn to actually return the favor. That and trying to protect Luffy at the same time. And the fact that she can even survive against Cracker is astounding in and of itself. It's a shame that during the scene the animation was not the greatest, especially the moments when Cracker was actually attacking with his sword. It just was moving in almost slow motion, so it didn't seem like she should have had trouble against him here. But really it's pretty obvious that they're saving their budget for an even bigger episode that's coming up, or maybe they were just pouring it into that one scene where Luffy just comes in and smacks freaking Cracker across the face with the palm of his gummu gummu no hands. The this was a solid episode of One Piece, which is totally worth your time if you're watching the series, especially if you do not read the manga version, as this one finally starts to get into Santi's past a little bit more, and some of it is even expanded upon upon the things that we see in the anime or in the manga version, so that's another good reason to actually check it out. I'm going to give this episode right here a 4 out of 5. Some of the animation and artwork, of course, was not really all that great and lacked a little bit of impact, but for the most part, story-wise, the Luffy moment, not me being awesome. This was a solid package right here. Check it out, guys. If any of you did watch this week's episode, make sure to tell me what you thought about it in the comments section below. Did you find yourself saddened by Sanji's incredibly tragic backstory? How is he going to escape from the prison and eventually meet Zeph? And what is Luffy going to do against Cracker? Can he defeat this seemingly unstoppable warrior? Tell me all your thoughts and what you hope to see in the next episode of One Piece. Thank you all again for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all things One Piece related, whether that be the anime, the manga version. Remember, I review a ton of other anime series as well. Make sure to also share this video with all your friends and give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.